Hello and welcome to Disconnect. Today we are talking about emergencies hmm. on the road. Yeah, not uh, no signals. How do I scroll my reels? Yeah, no serious emergencies or snacks. Huh? Or snacks. Let's set the agenda clearly. That's my emergency for sure. Yeah. Uh, no, not snacks either. But in case something happens, hmm. right? Now, in this regard, you have a lot of experience in terms of how to deal with stuff. Are you suggesting that I've had more emergencies than anybody <laughs> else in this room? <laughs> no, you've trained for them, right? How to yeah. respond and deal with stuff like that. Yeah. So, um, and I have not. So, I'm completely green about this. Uh, at the best, what experience I would have is... But, okay, let, let's start with you because a lot more people will relate to you mm -hmm. in terms of not being prepared. But when right. you're in a difficult situation, forget whether it's an emergency or not. What's your first reaction? What do you do first? Uh, so that's that's what I wanted to get at, like what all can construe as an emergency, hmm. right? So, one is a very simple thing, like just being stranded. Hmm. Okay, that that's also an emergency. Like when we used to go riding off-road, just being, uh, having a puncture on your bike in the middle of nowhere can be an emergency. Yep. Because you are six hours into your ride, you are in the middle of nowhere, the next place to get something, you don't even know where that is. Correct. You can be, that, and that sounds pretty easy that, okay, you're just stuck somewhere. But we were in situations where we'd not seen anything for quite some time. Hmm. We were off the main road, you know, and just riding in the middle of nowhere. Hmm. And you're stuck. Yeah. That's also an emergency. Yeah. Now, in that, it was the easy thing because you're going off-road, you always had a buddy along. So you had somebody there to help you out. Correct. So we had that situation where I had a flat on my bike and I was riding with Varad and both of us were on impulses and somehow we teamed it up together. He's like, no, no, we'll figure it out. And uh, so that's like a simple kind of emergency. Um, the bigger kind of stuff that's happened was once again, like similarly on a ride and uh, the friend had a crash, right? Now that was one serious one, Yeah. which I, I mean, I 100% freaked out over. Yeah. Right. When I first, because I was riding behind him and I was, we were, I couldn't see him. He was further up the road and I came up on him. And uh, at first I didn't even realize because he was in the, off the road, in the bushes mm. next to the road. And I just happened to see something and then I noticed that somebody's there. And then I came back and I realized like, oh shit, mm. you know. That was like, I think the most serious one hmm. that I would have been a part of. Okay. So I know that you probably don't want to explore that, but what happened next? So you saw your friend in the bush. So you've gone ahead, you've noticed something, you've turned around, come back and you realize your friend's in the bush. Right. May or may not be injured. We don't know yet. What do you do so next? So I think this is the simple thing, like uh, what, follow the same things that what I've told you, like, you know, we've done with Siran. In any case, when you get any chance of injury or anything like that, first is assess, hmm. right? Before you think of Moving the so that's person. the rational way to do yeah. it. But what is your emotional state at this point? Oh, of course, I was fully panicking. Mm. And in my head, I was like, dude, what the hell? And all of that. But the actions weren't like that, mm. right? I immediately parked the bike. I made sure the bike was off the road. Mm. I was off the road, right? So that you're not creating any more issues. Yeah. Moved back to uh, where my friend was and went and checked on him. And he was uh, like, he was conscious, but he was in pain, clearly. Yeah. And I didn't jump in to do anything to him first thing i did was talk to him hmm. right i was of course in a bit of a panic of course. but uh i did just ask him what's happened where are you hurt right so it took him a couple of minutes before he could give me a clear answer hmm. but once i had that sense of okay he's hurt and it's not a small thing he's hurt somewhere on his lower back so which is anyways a critical area Correct. you know so once we got a hang of all of that then it was very slow work after that correct to what do we do next? So getting in touch with people. Hmm. Who do we get in touch with? How do we get him to a hospital? Yep. Right? Because we were outside the city, way outside the city. Yep. So there wouldn't be like an ambulance or you can take a cab or something like that. Hmm. So figuring all of that then became the slow steps after that because you were not accessible that way. Correct. So th that was basically it and getting to intimate uh, friends who would be able to help out. Hmm. I think looking for help the quickest possible help yeah. other people who had exp experience in that space got in touch with them asked them to help out and as many people as i could hmm. right so that we could get this pds response yeah and that was basically it's what a pretty happened. good approach actually if you think about it okay yeah because to me what i like to do 
and I do it for small things as well as big things is I try to imagine what the worst case scenario is hmm. okay uh, it helps a lot it sounds strange but it helps a lot so for example let's say I have to get my passport renewed and I'm running late hmm. this is a to me a tense thing because I'm a punctual person hmm. I hate being late right hmm. so I would imagine what's the worst case scenario could I possibly be the first guy to ever show up late for their passport appointment hmm. and as soon as you realize that that's not going to be the case I'm sure that this passport office has dealt with somebody who showed up late for an appointment then the emotion of the challenge sort of fades down a little bit right so when i travel alone on a motorcycle there is always that fear right what happens if the motorcycle breaks down what's your worst case scenario you're going to have to call a truck mm-hmm. if you call a truck it will going to be uh, very inconvenient because you'll have to wait a few hours for this thing to show up and then the bike will have to be loaded and then will they take you along with the bike in which case you'll be sitting in a smelly uncomfortable truck cabin or worse right or you'll have to figure out a vehicle that can accompany the truck which is another bunch of okay so this is your worst case scenario yeah in either case your worst case scenario is a truck will have to come and get you hmm. right and very small situations can become extremely complicated right uh, if you know priyanka kochar a bike with girl yeah, yeah. she fell off her bike and the bike went down the side in ladakh where was physically her location she was about i think 45 feet below the road don't hold me for the number it's something like that her problem was nobody knew she'd fallen off yeah and she was 50 feet from help but the problem was nobody could see her and then it took a army truck to look down spot the bike or her i forget now which and then they created the rescue right to me the first two or three things that i would do is first learn to ignore the motorcycle or the car a lot of people are invested in their machines so they immediately start focusing on that first and i remember, i know of cases i think where uh, boyfriends and girlfriend riding together had a crash and the guy ran to the bike first oi right which is not healthy for the girlfriend at all and it's not i think healthy for the relationship either it sounds like a meme stuff man it, it almost sounds like a meme but i know this is the case including one couple who were together later hmm. for years together i think they got married and the girl had a huge burn scar on her thigh because while he was rescuing the motorcycle it was resting on her leg and the girl says the clear point of this was that he was rescuing the bike not the fact that i was stuck under it so the idea was to check the other side of the bike more than extricate girlfriend from under bike okay so first i think the first thing you have to do is if you can imagine the worst case scenario before you start out mm. Mm. i think it helps you set the agenda for yourself a lot sometimes this will scare you a lot too not everybody is mentally super strong and as experience grows you become stronger but i think it is important to know what is your worst case plan out of the situation right when josh and anand were stuck in ladakh uh, during the year when there were flash floods they didn't try to first rescue the motorcycle they first walked out of the storm and that took them 20 kilometers of walking through the rain and through the flash floods or whatever but that's what they did and once they were safe and secure then the idea that we'll walk back into that situation and see if we can get the bike out occurred to them mm. and i know that if the situation was so bad that the bikes were washed away and never found again i don't think anand or josh would not miss the bikes or would not miss the money that would be required to replace them correct but the priority was themselves so always first thing remove the emotion from the picture and focus on the humans involved they are the one thing that will be hardest to fix all of the mechanical parts can eventually be fixed no matter how tense it is right so the first thing i do imagine the worst case scenario and make a plan for it and for most motorcycle trips solo or group the worst case scenario is you have to put the bike on a truck exactly because this was this actually connects back beautifully to that conversation about uh, crash tests and safety right because most car drivers will never think about this and will think of this as unnecessary or fear mongering because you are just saying mere ko nahi hone wala hai correct right which is not the case correct. you have to first and foremost admit that this possibility exists yeah right? and and i'm also going to say in the same breath don't overdo it okay uh, i remember i know two trips that were leaving for ladakh at the same time okay. i was involved with one of them and my colleagues were involved in the other we took at least 15 times the amount of oxygen they took now the oxygen was rented we would give it back and we'd get the deposit back so it was not like i had paid for 15 and they had paid for 3 it was not that situation but they just said we won't need it hmm. and we said but what if we need it and you can overdo this thing imagine if i were to tell you that instead of being 15 times the oxygen because they were in cars and we were on bikes imagine if we'd done 300 times the oxygen then you're clearly overcompensating and you may not need I so th- much i think i think a good way to frame this would be keep it real 
keep right? it real keep it but real. keep it mm-hmm. very real mm-hmm. okay i'm not saying imagine that somebody will die on you that is a possibility but it's a very remote possibility and that is a very very difficult situation to be in where you must remember one thing as hard and cruel as it sounds if somebody has died on you their need for help is over okay as as cruel as that sounds they are done now you have to get the body out and inform the family which is very difficult and very challenging but that is one of the easiest situations in the sense of they don't need any more help mm. they are out of that picture the worst case scenario for a human being is to be hurt so grievously that they need to be taken to a hospital and that's the situation you want to be prepped for how are you going to handle it who's going to do what and i believe if there's a group trying to make a decision it's very slow if somebody chooses to make a decision for the group even if they make some bad choices it's a much much faster process which is why if i'm going to travel with a group a lot they all being aware of what the emergency plan is having some amount of training on them to be able to deal with that thing and you being able to locate the people who are the least emotional in that situation who can postpone the emotion until the good decisions that need to be made have been made that's the ideal group to be with what i have discovered is i become calmer and calmer as the situation becomes more and more difficult and it helps me make better decisions it's not like i don't feel the pain or the fear or the nervousness or did i make a good decision is this going to go well or badly good to know i, I just know that i can deal with that emotion later but mm. right now there's a job to be done let's mm. get that job done first mm. and if that's a hurt motorcycle it's not a crisis mm. if that's a hurt human being can we deal with it right now by ourselves and if it's very seriously hurt who do we ask for help and what's the fastest way to get help right and it's a very clear agenda first the humans and in the humans are you you're also human so you don't want to become a victim while trying to help somebody else which right. is why his point was very critical that right. you move the bike out of the way before you contributed to solving your friend's problems because you don't want to have two things that are broken now because somebody made a mistake and we i said this before in the first aid also this is one of the first things they say if somebody has had a issue you want to make sure you are safe while you're dealing with their issue because you don't want to create a second issue and now your group has two people to deal with right so the first thing i would say is think about the worst case scenario so that it's not going to surprise you second keep your emotions in check they will lead you to bad decision making they will lead you to a sense of urgency where there isn't one and one of the first things i learned in first aid they said look you always have time to think mm you will make more mistakes if you rush and try to help rather than if you were to take a moment assess the whole situation understand the full width of the situation and then take a decision as to what happens next the only exception to this is somebody can't breathe that is a real emergency crisis where you have to intervene immediately everything else there is time i have a the perfect example for this you remember when we were riding back from chennai yeah uh, so we'd all gone for a track day it was uh, shumi uh, Uh, who was with us on the way back amaya was not there no. amaya had uh, not come back we didn't down 3 4 of us and we rode back up 3 uh, 4 of us akshay was with us i think anyway yeah. so point being that we were 3 4 bikes riding back from chennai hmm. to pune and uh, this was at satara hmm. we had stopped at the mcdonalds for lunch and when i stopped i remember i had a call from vanita hmm. and when i called her uh i just spoke to her and i was done and i said okay chalo let's go uh, shumi was the uh, lead rider so i said okay we're done we can go so he asked me what's up so i said no no nothing he said no no what's up so he could tell something has happened mm. so vanita told me uh, while i was on the call she told me that basically uh, our son siran he had fallen and broken his hand and she was fully panicking Correct. right so i just told her calm down whatever and i told her where we were and obviously she was even more panicked by that because we were still, still three three and a half hours at least half hours away and um, so we just had a conversation saying that this is the situation and said okay let's get back and be efficient with our travel now as we got back on the road we were a convoy of three four bikes and uh, you were leading i was on the busa he was on the multi back then the uh, 1200 the 1200 and um, i remember it would have happened subconsciously but the pace picked up yeah and the pace was i mean it was enough because i was maybe distracted right uh, i was thinking about something else so it felt much and we had to stop for fuel and when we stopped i immediately told shumi that you know there's no point let's slow this down if you have to slow it down further that's fine yeah. but i don't want to create another issue on the way there yeah. so uh, this is and 
it was such an instinctive thing right it would have been great to drive right sorry uh, fast and feel occupied by it correct but it did not make sense i did not feel comfortable by it at all correct and the context of this you should know is both of us and the other two people we were with all of us have the capacity to go much faster that's not the issue here the issue is kartik became aware that there is a distraction and he said because of the distraction i don't think we should be doing this pace and so the entire group just slowed down this was not a problem and remember whether you go a little bit faster or a little bit slower arrival time is not going to vary by all that much so and the matter. other aspect that struck me once i got there was because of that decision what happened was en- energy conservation yeah. we had done two days of track riding then ridden out and all of that yeah we were at the end of a 3 and a half thousand kilometer run at that point yeah and i was going to get back to pune and straight to the hospital where i would be needed to help out yeah when i got there because of the decision to just slow things down yeah. right i got there and i could be useful correct right i did not end up being just tired and yeah. you know just sitting there figuring stuff out like correct. that i was there being able to participate right correct. and there was a i look back at that yeah. and though that i'm surprised yeah. because we've done a long stint yeah. i should have been tired whatever it may have been adrenaline and all of that kicking in but uh, when i got there i was fine you're was functioning like, okay. yeah. Yeah. yeah so that was useful i think in that sense being able to calm down and taking that rational yeah. choice yeah will help you go the distance right yeah. take the right calls yeah and, and remember the point about this that i really really enjoy about having to deal with a difficult situation is how little can you worry and how much can you do because worrying doesn't do anything by itself it only complicates your decision making by just adding unnecessary inputs right so when i started riding alone i went with the idea saying most people who ride alone come out the other side okay statistically therefore there's not much to worry about hmm. that's my baseline my baseline right. is i'll be okay hmm. next what happens in the worst case scenario worst hmm. case scenario for the for me as a human being it doesn't matter i am not involved anymore my worst case for the bike is bike goes on a truck this is not a big deal it is extremely inconvenient it might turn out to be extremely expensive but it's a bike on a truck it's not a big deal so the motorcycle immediately became a no concern best case scenario nothing will happen to the bike will be awesome worst case scenario bike will break down so hard that it'll get on a truck okay solved right statistically what are the chances that i will get hurt so much that i'll end up in a hospital small chance but if i'm in a hospital there are doctors who are trying to do the best they can so again i'm not involved in this so i can i worry about the quality of a doctor in the place that i'm going to get hurt yeah i could but will it achieve anything no so out of the picture so then you're like is my first aid kit enough to deal with a minor injury if i have along the way so okay i need a crepe bandage in case i have to give support to a certain part of the arm or not that's it after that the worries became very remote because i've dealt with a sequence of mental challenges saying how would i deal with this how would i deal with this how would i deal with this i'm done <laughs> it's like when we're talking about cars right and uh, being able to fix stuff in a car fixing stuff is so difficult today yeah. right there's only some amount that you can Correct. do to make the car road worthy again Correct. in case of any issue beyond that it's out of your hand it's right? out of your hand <laughs> you can't do anything you can't and and in fact it would be a good idea for you to think about what is out of hand but appears to be fixable also hmm interesting for example if your brakes are starting to fail hmm do you say i will go slower and try to get to my destination hmm. or do you say wow this could snowball into a massive accident hmm. so i'm going to park the car and call roadside assistance now hmm. that is a good call hmm if you're alone how much risk are you taking if you're with family how much risk are you willing to take correct if you're in a group environment again yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. environment and you if you're in a group do you tell the group to carry on do you decide one part of the group stays with you the rest of it carries on or do you say hey listen it's a truck that's going mm-hmm. to come and tow the car mm-hmm. nobody needs to be here you guys carry on i will mm-hmm. solve this get it to a garage if it's fixable awesome otherwise i'll figure out a way to catch a bus overnight taxi or whatever and meet you where you are and hop into somebody else's car mm-hmm. how much of a issue you're going to make out of this is a total mindset issue so to me an emergency is a thing that happens does it happen statistically so often that we have to always be on like tenter hooks and no not really i've seen the flip side of that also yeah like that um, last time for that astral ride when we were in hanley hmm. so we were staying at that the homestay thing yeah, yeah. which is very popular yeah. so there a rider turned up on a himalayan he'd had a flat 
and uh, while he was fixing the flat he did what did he do did something and basically a truck ran over one of the tires oh, so he God. was basically stranded yeah and while we were hearing this horror story mm. and he made it right while we were listening to this horror story the in owner he was talking about you know it's crazy out here somebody's this guy there's another guy who's been missing who was also on a motorcycle mm. and uh, we were like what could have happened this like it takes all of one puncture yeah. at the wrong time of the day correct if it happened let's say about 4 5 o'clock yeah. in the evening yeah he's done he's done because he's going to be stranded there's nobody on that road yeah. and it's going to get real cold real, real fast. fast and if you're not prepped for it you're in trouble yeah so a small thing like the same thing where i started off like riding off road yeah. and having a puncture versus in a completely different environment yeah. and i had never thought of it that way you know yeah which is why when i go to ladakh you start as early in the morning as you dare hmm. usually not before sunrise even if it's before sunrise is half an hour before sunrise never more than that you don't want to be out there in the dark when the things are cold because there's black ice which you anyway can't see i don't want darkness added to that but i definitely want to be at my destination by 2:30 3 o'clock yep and that is because i'm trying to save 4 hours of daylight for an emergency it has nothing to do with my ability to ride i would do this in the plains where i would start at 4 in the morning and i'd run till 8 o'clock in the night it's not a crisis and i remember that i was completely flabbergasted we were at pango yeah and uh, we had reached way before sun sunset we were already changed rested chai wai and all done is got in dark yeah and now you're seeing bikes roll in correct and not just a rider a rider with a pillion a uh, lady and they're looking for a place to stay they that's don't terrible. they they don't have a booking yeah and to me that was like i don't i can't even imagine that's that's a disaster that's yeah. asking for an emergency yeah that's yeah that's asking for an emergency yeah. i don't know what happened to them i yeah. mean it was a small village yeah. presumably and hopefully yes they did but that was like a that no, was for I me the like thing a worst about, case scenario. i think the thing about ladakh is that once people realized that they were in this kind of trouble they would have gotten help hmm. because in that kind of remote a place people will not leave you alone without trying no, to help yeah. so in that sense you are, you have a backup but to be able to take you and your partner or friend and plan your day so that you're arriving in a high altitude cold place late in the night to up on a motorcycle solo and you don't have a place to stay and you don't have a plan that's just terrible planning yeah it just needs to go sideways in one direction in your your <laughs> so screw to, yeah yeah plan yeah so uh, when the first time i went to ladakh everybody gave me 30000 warnings about altitude sickness hmm. but i prepped so much for it and not by taking medication for it by understanding how it works how much water do i need to drink etc hmm. etc et i've never really experienced altitude sickness hmm. it doesn't mean i won't have it the next time i go hmm. but i understood that it is such a vital part of traveling in those altitudes that if you take it lightly and you say kuch nahi hoga dekh lenge oh yeah fir to kuch na kuch hoga mm. right and mm. to me that fear is healthy it it's not paralyzing fear where you won't try it mm. but that fear is there yeah we are at the other end uh, of the spectrum he doesn't get affected by it. i get affected by it every time <laughs> and i've tried everything <laughs> i can yeah. to avoid it um and it still happens i mean thankfully the degree has reduced i don't yeah. know how but uh, the last time we went for reboot yeah. that was i think the easiest of all yeah. all my trips to ladakh that's because i was with him when i was telling him what to do <laughs> yeah that too uh, so that was okay chal we'll go out of the wilderness zone if you have an emergency and again let's be specific an accident which involves another person hmm. in the urban environment where you have to also deal with um the complexity of other people being around you uh the law how do you go about that how will you break that down see the first thing that helps in an emergency situation is take charge hmm. indian crowds seem to respond pretty well to somebody appearing to be in charge and then following instructions hmm. so it's the difference between requesting somebody to help you move somebody off the road versus telling them help me move it off That's the road an excellent one right telling them seems to work a lot better in our environment it says something for our culture but i'm not going to go into it to me this is a tool that i can use in an emergency so i am willing to use it mm. so if i were to encounter somebody having a crash like uh, i think 3 4 weeks ago i was going up the curly flyover outside the office the flyover i like to call curly and uh, there was a wee storm that came over the crest and then it slipped and fell oh okay no injuries really but it happened so i was on the other side of the flyover so i parked the bike i went across and i basically somebody was walking past 
and while i was talking to the rider i basically said bike uthao and it was very pol- it wasn't polite it was an instruction it was instruction bike uthao and that dude basically stopped whatever they're doing and they help lift the bike so by the time i established that the rider was okay his bike was also okay but this person until that point was passing the situation by saying there's a guy on scene hmm. there's a motorcycle down there's a motorcyclist down we are okay you just got him to help full stop yeah if i had said will you please lift the motorcycle i don't know what you would have said or right. done right. but when i say lift the bike hmm. we follow instructions pretty easily so hmm. i use that to my advantage okay right nice. that's a good one it's the same i think when the police show up Mm. the more fear you show the more there is a chance it will get misused by the police or by somebody else in the crowd against you it's much easier to just be controlled and calm mm. and the police thing is the strangest thing i think we've given police power over us by being scared of them rather than dealing with what they are mm. they are public servants trying to do a good job there was a time when they didn't get paid enough so the bribery culture happened and i think we are seeing the end of it where slowly this will go away because there are a thousand ways that are being invented where they can't do this anymore it's a matter of time before it ends and then i suppose india will have high level corruption like the united states does but low level corruption will probably disappear but until that point if you treat the policeman like a god then he will behave like a god okay he is there to do a job and you have to deal with it at that level so if you start saying sir 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 it's much simpler to say officer mm-hmm. an officer doesn't give him a higher position above you it puts you at the same place as them mm-hmm. and that makes things easier to do because remember you are not guilty you are trying to get through a situation i'll give you an actual example abhay had a crash he was riding my ktm 200 duke mm-hmm. and it wasn't his fault a girl ran across mm-hmm. when she crossed the bike she saw an auto on the other side so she turned around and rammed into my bike oh god okay no major injuries not a high speed accident the girl was more scared than she was injured which of course we found out later so i get a call as as away he is in such and such police station so i went to the police station they've made abhay stand in the corner of the room and i was like have you had water no they won't let me have water have you had chai they won't let me have water so i said okay at that point arti was working as a journalist so i called arti and i said i'm at such and such place do you know somebody at this police station she's like go meet the sho let me find out his name so we found out the name of the sho which doesn't mean we knew him hmm. so i basically walked into his cabin and i said sir this has happened to my bike this is a colleague of mine this is what i understand of the situation what do you think we should do so he very calmly said look you have only two choices one is you settle or you let them file an fir these are your only two options hmm. if you settle because you are uh, uh, more affluent appearing people versus this lady's uh, this girl's family chances are you'll have to pay them and if you let it become an fir then you'll go to court but a court thing is not a problem you live in mumbai anyway this thing will drag on for 10 years now it's a matter of who has more staying power hmm i said okay so these are my options when i came out half the police station was like how the hell did you go into that room and how do you know sir hmm so i said i don't know sir and how i went into the room is through this door and i basically threatened <laughs> to demonstrate it again by reopening the door <laughs> and the guy asking this question was his pa uh. pa had gone out for a chai uh. when i walked into the room so he was feeling like he was in trouble when i got back into the room abhay was sitting and having chai hmm i didn't know this station head officer hmm. i didn't know him but now suddenly the whole attitude of the police changed they were willing to show me where my bike was how much damage was there how the family was saying this and the other and when it all settled down the girl was an injured she was more scared and she had been given pain killers hmm. but the fact that we were calm about it we were methodical about it and we didn't try to bribe anybody along the way we were just trying to figure out what is the process led us to a much cleaner resolution and i think uh, what you've uh, also said shows that they are solution oriented they, they are, are not interested in having two people sitting and squabbling no, in front of them about who's not. fault it's a waste it is. of time for them yeah they want to get whoever's think about it like this even a corrupt police officer in that situation gains nothing from the argument hmm. even if he's corrupt and he's looking for a bribe do you think he wants to be there for 3 hours trying to extract Correct. the bribe or he wants the bribe right now hmm. and get it done with and get it done with right so when dealing with uh the police or any official that way yeah. i think the simple thing is to stay calm stay calm talk in a polite manner yeah. agreed and uh, be pointed about what the solution is i think that always. is always always the important thing always and i don't think like what i've seen is they are not so tied down to what what happened who did what they're looking at this is what the situation is Correct. now yeah 
if you want to get into the who did what and all then you're talking about a court case that's yeah. a different matter than yeah. altogether if you want to get out of here and continue leading your life this is these yeah. are your options yeah, it happened to a colleague of mine they were driving uh, to work in a swift and uh, this is a slippery flyover it's right outside my house and i get this call saying i've managed to overturn the swift wow i said okay uh, but it happens to be right outside my house i got on my bike i went there and at the bottom of the flyover is a police jockey and my friend the swift and policeman were all there so i rolled up and i said what is going on policeman says matter of factly this flyover is terrible things roll down this flyover all the time especially oh, wow. in the rains ye to gaadi humne to bus aur truck bhi dekhe so your friend has rolled his swift abhi usne seat belt pehna tha airbags the to usko kuch hua nahi hai gaadi ko damage hua hai so i said okay so what's to be done he says aap yahan pe ho i said yes he says tell your friend to go to the police station do this paperwork and come otherwise he will not get his insurance solved nice and they went back to work they basically said we wanted to make sure your friend has somebody to talk to mm. now you're here our responsibility is done mm. this is the process now please go and do it and the car had rolled car it rolled they uh, towed it down to the bottom of the flyover so it won't block traffic made sure he was physically okay he was shaken up obviously but he was not physically injured so he said call your friend i was the nearest so i said okay you go go lodge a complaint and come nice so when they started making a fuss at the police station about lodging a complaint he called me he said what do i do i said hang on i asked him he said they're making a fuss he said tell them it's for an insurance claim there's nobody else involved Hmm. so he said koi there was nobody else involved i rolled the car and it just happened to happen acha us flyover pe hua kya pehle kyun nahi bola so it's like everybody knows that the flyover case keeps, keeps oh, wow. causing issues right <laughs> but after that he said nobody asked for any additional bribe hmm. no hassle nothing okay then it went very calmly from there so my understanding of the police is please don't turn them into gods hmm. because then you will get taken advantage of hmm deal with them as public servants who are trying to do a job as much as you're trying to get to the other side and you've had an issue of whatever sort it is deal with it find a solution and move on i think sometimes in emergencies people don't even know what a real emergency is they just make everything into an emergency think about it if you don't have puc and a cop stops you it's not an emergency you're going to get a fine how long are you willing to argue with the cop over this right If your bike is broken into thirty-five parts, but you are physically okay, your motorcycle is in trouble, but it's no longer an emergency. You are okay. So basically, when we are talking about emergencies, it comes down to money, which yeah. is material, yeah. right? There is the human angle, which can be flesh, bone, etc. Yeah. And the third is time. Yeah. So basically, you are you will have to play with these three factors in terms of yes. seriousness. Yes. Thank you. And you know, when you fell off my tono. Remember I was in the classroom. Mm. I didn't know this had happened. Mm. I came out and I saw your face and I knew something had happened. Mm. My first concern was not the motorcycle. Mm. My first concern is are you okay? Mm. And as I'm walking towards you I can already see you're okay. Mm. You're obviously upset. Mm. Something has definitely happened. Since you're looking at me while you're that kind of upset something has happened to my bike. <laughs> But you're okay. Yeah. So this is not a crisis anymore. Mm. It's a problem. Yeah. It's a challenge. Mm. And if the bike was in 35 pieces obviously financially this is a huge thing. Fair enough. you are okay mm. you are the hardest thing to fix in all of this yeah. yeah i mean in terms of threat that would be the thing yeah yeah right so when when somebody has a crash at the race track and a race track is a great place to have a crash because the ambulance is always 300 meters away it was designed for you to have a crash and everything is far away from you etc etc right first thing is always is the rider okay because a bike can block the race track and waste other people's time but a broken bike is just a broken bike All my crashes have been on the race track only. It's man. the best. It's the best situation ever. <laughs> Either race track or off road. No, it's <laughs> the best situation. Remember when Sarath high sided himself out of the scooty pep in the awards thing? Okay, came into turn ten, scooty pep, small thing. He was trying to set lap time or whatever. You know how racers are. At that. Kari. Uh, at uh, Chennai, turn ten. At Chennai. Yeah, and he high sided and broke his collarbone. Huh. Okay, very sad, and it obviously interrupted his race season, etc., etc., etc. But think about it like this. Sarat high sides him off the scooter, lands on the ground. By that time, the marshal has already noticed there is a problem. The flags have already come mm. out, which means that the ambulance was there in a three four minutes after that. He was in the medical bay of the race track about five minutes after that, in which time they've cut his leathers or whatever and checked that his collarbone is indeed broken. And therefore, within fifteen twenty minutes, whatever he was in the hospital, uh, on the way to the hospital in the ambulance. This is the best case medical care. The only way to do this better is to have a helicopter instead. Mm. Is the best place to have a crash. 
right when i uh, slid down the road on the tono also in turn 2 when my airbag went off oh i was enjoying the airbag sensation i was not worried about me at all i wasn't worried about the bike at all either <laughs> i'm like ha theek hai it's been 16 17 years of the race track without a crash kabhi to hona tha kabhi to might as well be now yeah. and i know it's on a warm up lap so we're not going fast hmm. so the chances that the tono will be seriously damaged minimal hmm. okay and my uh, leathers had a new airbag in it hmm. if you wanted to try it commitment this is not an easy test but ho gaya <laughs> Okay, now in hindsight, I realize maybe it's a terrible idea to <laughs> waste the airbag on such a slow speed crash because replacing that airbag is a, such a challenge. Okay. But now I know what it feels like, how it works, etc., etc. Right? I'm better informed than before. And what is the damage on the two and over one slightly bent crash slider from a low speed crash? It's okay. Mm. It's not like I had to fix everything, anything on the bike after that. So in terms of all of this reporting to the police and all that is required for your insurance. Yeah. Is there anything else? No. No. See I think before we go into the legal I think it's best that you classified into three parts mm. first is material mm. material damage is material damage you can make as much of a fuss about it as you like Correct. it is just material damage Correct. most of the time your insurance will pay for it worst case you'll be out of pocket by a heck of a lot of money mm. and these are all minor issues compared to what else could have happened mm. second is people this is the most critical aspect of it all these are the hardest things to fix mm. so if there are people who are injured people who are scared people who are going into shock I think the better prepared you are for it, the calmer you can be about dealing with it, the better the things get. I'll give you a slightly horrific example, but it is a great example. We were playing cricket. I think I was in fifth, sixth, seventh, so thirteen, fourteen, fifteen years old. And you know how housing societies like to put fences around everything, so they put a fence around our field, and the fence had spikes that stick out of the fence. So when I went to catch the ball, sorry to do this to you, I, I landed with one of my calf muscles impaled on one of those spikes. Now. I told you I get calmer in an emergency. So everybody on the field started to panic. The per person not panicking and the person in the most pain is me. So I directed the rest of the operation. <laughs> okay. So I'm like uh, get my leg off that thing. <laughs> so the bravest person came and lifted my leg off that thing. Chalo. Now carry me home. How do we carry you home? I said you're not going to do like a birthday bumps wala carry. I'll sit like a raja with my feet across like this and you will carry me as if I'm on a palki. Make palki, let's go. So my father, who's sitting in the balcony reading a newspaper, he sees his son's head appear. Okay, much taller than it usually is, and he looks up, and I'm sitting, and all my friends are carrying me, and he can't figure out whether I've done something amazing or I've hurt myself. So when I show up, he sees okay, serious injury. Let's go to the doctor. Let's go to the doctor. I am the genius. Doctor says, should I give you some anesthesia because I have to stitch this closed? I said no. I didn't know what was anesthesia. I didn't know. Th- I don't recognize the word. but my natural reaction to medication is no <laughs> so my dad's looking at me say are you sure about this i said yeah yeah no no anesthesia so the man st- and he was an army doctor so he didn't give a crap either way right so he stitched me up and i am like this is incredible amount of pain so when he finished until then i didn't open my mouth okay i basically nearly broke my dad's thumb because i was holding on to his hand but listen to this at the end i said doc what is anesthesia and now he's looking at me like i am the dumbest thing he's ever seen okay because he's like Oh you said no before you found out what it is. <laughs> well yeah. <laughs> right? But the amazing thing about that experience is I was in control the entire time because nobody else was willing to take control. I mean it was not an injury that made me unconscious so I was I had the capacity to do it mm. so I did it. Mm. I told them what happens next. So to me materials ignore it doesn't matter. it's fixable whatever it is it is fixable one way or another worst case you'll have to replace it it's done people take care of them sometimes mental injuries are much worse than physical injuries take care of them if that requires training i think it's worthwhile especially if you're an ardent driver you're a p- passionate motorcyclist who's going to be out there a lot it is worth being trained for this basic first aid training goes a long way okay third comes time and time is a weird thing it's as important a currency in this kind of a situation as you're willing to make of it right if you accept that i'm going to wait on the side of the road 5 hours for an rsa truck to come it's not like you're going to die of a lack of amusement especially now that you have a phone and you can just do this like for 5 hours right you can make a thousand phone calls if you never if you haven't spoken to your family in 3 months that's a great time to call your family and tell them what's going on right what is the crisis here yeah right on the uh, amazing road trips podcast we said be flexible about your plan be flexible about your plan i was told that ties all of these things together yeah so the first time i was going for ridomania 
I've yeah, 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 told you the yeah, story, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So that imagine starting at 4 a.m. Hmm. today hmm. from Mumbai to go to Goa. and getting to goa the next morning yeah. at some it's crazy. 5 am or something yeah. like that and in the night after on the second bike when i finally decided to bail on riding to goa hmm. is because i realized it was way beyond my capability to manage the ride correct because the bike was weaving around like that hmm. it had gotten dark the headlamp was barely working and uh, okay it was raining so the visibility was even, even worse, worse. Hmm. so i just said i can't do this anymore yeah. at one point i mean obviously wanted to ride to ride a mania and arrive there the first time and all of that you know that excitement was there yeah. but at one point i just said dude it's too I, much i don't care if this takes another day yeah but this can't be done yeah. right and it's fine yeah it was i mean i was glad i did that because yeah. at least i got there okay yeah. because i don't know what would have happened in the night if i had just persisted in yeah. that environment so also it's an expectation thing right mm. i remember there was a ride of the rd350 club or something like that and they said will you like to come and i think i had only had a thunderbird at that point of time hmm. so i said i do have a 350 but it's a single and it's a royal enfield hmm. so then they said look we know that you had rd 350s etc etc come along anyway it'll be good fun so i said okay so i went and i think this is before all the big highways arrived and also quite a while ago 14 15 20 years ago something we left mumbai we crossed panvel and we stopped somebody's bike was not running oh. okay so they fixed it then from there we got up to chok chok is about another 11 12 kilometers down the road somebody else's bike broke and they're fixing it and now i'm beginning to get very frustrated because to me lonavla is like an hour and a half two hours of riding if there is traffic three hours of riding back in the day it could be much worse but we're going on a day in the i think it was a friday it was not even the weekend ek ho kya raha and then i realized that they were used to this uh-huh. they didn't think that they were having a bad ride they were this riding this, yeah. yeah it's an rd350 it's yeah. nearly nearly 30 years old or whatever right. something or the other is going to happen right. so it's okay once i got into that groove then the time factor didn't matters quite so much yeah right but as long as you decided to make the time a massive issue it's as massive an issue as you wanted to be right this uh, okay from back in college time and time being such an important factor right yeah. it changes everything yeah in college uh friends who were riding without licenses you know mm. and some of them were just crazy they were riding they would get caught by cops mm. right and they would be non plussed mm. that used to first and foremost uh for the police it would just be like these kids are not bothered that yeah. they've been caught right yeah. so that would only throw it's them it's terrible off, yeah right they would want something to mm. let them go and these guys would be like nahi hai <laughs> right it's like what do you mean nahi hai it's like i have 50 rupees i can't give you all 50 rupees i need something and obviously they'd be told that no no this doesn't work they'd be happy to sit there for a few hours yeah until they could get out of it and that's how they'd get out they're like i have all the time in the world Correct. i am not bothered about yeah. It. yeah i am not bothered so that being able to change your time parameters yeah in, that's a terrible example in terms terrible, of ethics though yeah in but, term yeah exactly but in this scenario yeah. just see how your mind state changes yeah. if you are in a situation which is now has become messy hmm. the second you say everything else can wait yeah this is top priority correct right the second you do that prioritization yeah time in that sense becomes flexible and you will calm down correct and that is very important because more often than not when you're traveling when you're on the road at the back of your mind you're like are we had to get here we had this booking or whatever you know something or i have it's to okay. get back home yeah, it's, exactly yeah, it's that okay. just saying it's fine yeah I, you know I'll, i'll reiterate this point i've made this before and i think it's worth repeating ad infinitum money you can earn back money you can lose time you can only lose so just save as much time as possible but when you're in a situation where time is your only currency be willing to spend it you don't really have a choice about it yeah now let me ask you a really difficult question in an emergency do you tell your family or not always this is not an obvious answer i agree with you but this is not the obvious answer well, a lot of people will not tell their family what's going on first and it is to me the ultra stupid thing to do in the situation what was the reasoning behind it i don't know dar jayenge acha tension jyada ho jayega हार्ट पेशेंट है एट्सेट्रा 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 एंड इट्स अ रनिंग चेन ऑफ कॉन्सिक्वेंस एंड टू मी दिस देर इज ओनली वन आंसर टू दिस क्वेश्चन द मोर पीपल हु नो वट्स गोइंग ऑन द इजियर थिंग्स विल गेट 
like whenever i've had a crash first people to find out are the people closest to me mm. and i don't care how bad the crash is or how light the crash is doesn't freaking matter yeah right arthi's rule was you call me baba i don't want somebody else to call me mm. and which also assumed that if say i was riding with josh a lot of that if josh called arthi saying shumi's had an accident then the tensions would be much higher correct right correct so it would be me who would call so there was one crash i had in bandra uh, cyclist shot across the road in one of those narrow gullies i hit him and his bike got bent he was okay but i landed with my forearm across my handlebar like this mm. so it felt like i'd broken it but then when the mobility started realized it wasn't broken it was just severely injured and i was in full riding gear obviously so when i went to my doctor there was a lump here like mm. a like roughly one and a half times the size of a golf ball sticking out of my arm and by then i had already called arthi this has happened that has happened i think back in the day was there a phone mobile phone i don't remember i think i had to go to a phone booth and make that phone call so by the time i went to a doctor uh, to our family doctor which is the same day basically i told the office i'm not coming and went right back and went back to juhu we used to live in juhu went back to the doctor and called her saying i'm in the clinic now so don't worry and the doctor says it's a soft tissue injury nothing needs to happen and she said get an x ray and the doctor is like koi zarurat nahi hai kuch nahi hua agar toota hota to itna dard nahi hota tha aapko bahut zyada dard hota tha it would be fine but the fact that she knew i had had a crash i had gone to the doctor i had taken care i had got the opinion i had got the medication just the fact that all the steps that required to be taken were taken and that information was passed on it makes everybody calm hmm. did i call my mom and dad who lived in a different city other no but arthi did so everybody knew i'd had a crash everybody knew i had a minor crash everybody knew i'd gone to a doctor found a solution taken the medicine whatever, whatever. and this is the same thing that should apply even if you are not um an adult in the sense that you're not living on your own even if you're living with your parents yeah do not hide it no they, mm. I, i'm telling you this lying itself is a problem mm. and a lie can only be solved by adding another lie to it another lie to it until it's such a huge castle that you don't know how to get out of it right it doesn't help anyway i can tell you it doesn't help right then you make it worse by having a crash and then trying to avoid telling your parents this huh. it's just stupid i mean honestly there's no other word for it i think it's just stupid have you done it have you ever not told your parents something has happened i have played uh, shahid <laughs> <laughs> so friend screwed up i went into responsibility oh, because oh, oh. his dad would have jacked him and that story was and i did it wasn't just one parent i it had to go to two parents nice. because the car was uh, one friends who would get into serious trouble with his dad if it was him who had crashed the car hmm. uh and where it happened was uh, near the other friend's house so they were involved because of that so we had to cook the same story at both ends <laughs> but at the end of the day it's not like the parents didn't know <laughs> right yeah it was ridiculous i mean we did it and uh i don't know why we did it back then because mm. that friend would have really gotten into trouble yeah. uh so i said theek hai main karta hu don't worry about it mere pe kitna chillayenge that was correct. that was the yes, since i'm third party uh, third party theek hai chilla chilla ke kitna chillayenge correct <laughs> but in all of that we got properly jacked because there was uh, damage to some wall so we had to pay for that <laughs> <laughs> so then it was like oh dude <laughs> what do we do about this because yeah. coming to me like we treat we figure it out so i mean those lies just kept yeah, piling it, it up, right? up yeah but and i'm telling you were, of course just tell the truth Okay mm. in my house we were not rich there was no real pocket money to go around my house was full of change mm. there were katoris and katoris full of change all over the house so i started playing contra mm. i've told you this before i think 30 rupees and they'll unlock the game for you so you get 30 lives and then you can mm. just keep playing basically to the video game guy mm. and there used to be a video game place where you go and play a video game right 30 rupees is his entire next one and a half hours machine is gone because this man is going to play mm. so i'd basically take 30 rupees in change and give now if you go every day and give 30 rupees in change that katori is getting empty so one day dad noticed that this katori is getting empty and he's like which of you two is taking money i thought didn't have a second i am for what the katori was full now it's barely any money left i said um, to play video games and video games is looked down upon in my household at a point of time basically What is this obsession with video games? There's a lot of money missing. So I said, sorry, it's thirty rupees a day, and I've been playing for like two weeks or three weeks or whatever at this point. Whoa! <laughs> so he's like, what is in this game that you're enjoying so much? Take that money, buy a book. I would have respected you. What is this video game nonsense? 
but the situation diffused from the moment i said i am taking the money it would be a lot worse if i were to tell i don't know mm-hmm. correct right and many years later there was a 500 rupee note that went missing from my house and when my father said did you take that money i said no uh, but that was the end of that i don't know where the money went and i honestly don't i didn't take the money but the moment i said that my dad said i trust him hmm. because ye to jab video game khelta tha to gadha hai khud hi bata diya ke ye khel raha tha yahi paise leke gaya right many years later i joined college and at my house alcohol is also not a thing and alcohol is honestly not a thing for me either but in college we are exploring so one day i came home and my mother's like have you been drinking yes my mother's like in in her head i can see the gears saying check ass right what did you drink i said i had a beer and then next day she says thank you for telling me at least because i could have said no who will know if you had two beers or not right it's mm-hmm. not easy to tell because if you were rolling drunk then that's a whole different thing right then she's like would you like to have beer in the house and to me even to me that is wrong <laughs> we are a non drinking household no i don't have beer in the house. no but in college you have i said mama that's a friends thing mm. I don't want to have beer in the fridge. It's not like I'm looking forward to recreationally drinking. Mm. If my friends were to come over and everybody wanted to have a beer, and then I would appreciate if you let them. And by this time we are eighteen, we are technically adults, right? And she's like, no, that's not the issue. I don't want to, you to feel like there are things that you have to do outside because you can't do them at home. But Excellent. that whole idea is built on the idea that I am not going to lie to her, so she doesn't have to lie back to me either. Yeah. So did we ever get beer in the house? No, we didn't. Huh. but that door was opened that day by mom saying if you like this i would rather you did it at home than be drunk and make a scene outside and i was like but this is not a being drunk thing this is a hanging out with friends thing correct calm down now when she comes to my house and she sees bottles of alcohol there it doesn't bother her at all because she now knows i don't recreationally drink this is more that friends will come and if they want alcohol there is some in the house i am not going home and having a drink but that pattern was said that day this is a brilliant example and i think this goes towards the parents rather than the i mean let's say kids in this case yeah. right parents also have to set the right environment so that the children can approach them and talk to them about things like this yeah and if as a parent you are lying you're teaching your tri- child to lie whether you like it don't like it realize it don't re- don't realize it and a similar situation like when we were in college one of our friends uh superb like it was incredible he would not touch a drink mm. and his dad used to literally beg him come have a drink with me <laughs> right <laughs> punjabi family so the thing was that yaar yeah, i want to share a drink with my son who's now in college he's Correct. graduating all of that no, no. <laughs> because for him mm. i've always had alcohol at home there's never been any temptation to have alcohol Correct. it's always readily available my Correct. dad is practically saying have a drink with me Correct. and all of us who were not allowed to have alcohol Correct. who You're were told alcohol boat. is a bad yeah. thing alcohol is never yeah. at home and you can't have it yeah. all of us were like yeah sure uncle yeah. you want us to have a drink with you yeah, yeah we'd be sitting we'd be sitting and having a drink with him but not his son yeah. because he never had the temptation he never saw it as a thing that he wanted to do only correct right so in that case it's a is the other way reverse psychology in that yeah. that case but i think it's important for parents elders in the family to create an environment as well where if you are in trouble if somebody you can ask for help yeah exactly yeah. that is so important without the judgment without the fear mm. at first you know that somebody will come and that is a big responsibility yeah and that has to be shouldered by the elders in the household yeah and it's true Come for friends and it's true yeah. for friends one of the first things i learned from chandan who's my best friend of all time is that he says you have to be loyal to your friend hmm. what does that mean hmm. he says when i make a stupid mistake you will stand by me no matter how stupid the mistake was you can make as much fun of me as you want you can pull my leg all the and you can hold it against me for the rest of my life but on that moment on that day you have to be my backup through thick mm. and thin you have to be there for me that is what a friend is for correct and that code of loyalty i think is very very interesting to think about because it doesn't mean that both the friends do the right thing or the group of friends does the right thing always it means that you recognize that the other people can make a mistake mm. and you warn them that they are about to make a mistake if you can but you also stand by them after that mistake have been made saying yeah okay despite everything you've gone and messed this up mm. it doesn't mean we abandon you at this point Mm. that allows you to ask for help yeah it's the same with parents i think if you're going to have a drink in the night you're subliminally telling your child that it's okay to have a drink in the night mm. whether it is a problem or not 
you think that you can do this once a week and control it but the child accepts that having a drink in the night is a normal thing and now if they extend it and decide to do it daily then you call them an alcoholic but it starts in that place and to me it's not about the alcohol it's about the lying if you tell the truth no matter how hard it is to confront it uh, it's the truth right i i always say this lies can bite but the truth has no teeth eventually the truth will win there is no way around that and i've been damn lucky this way so uh, josh anand my parents you i've never felt like i have to lie to any of you for any reason at all no matter how embarrassing the situation is if i'm in trouble i know i can go up to these people and say i need help help me now and no matter how stupid i've been and as much as my leg will get pulled about this and how many times i'll be reminded as to how stupid this whole thing was i will get help and if i'm the entertainment because i got help chal theek it's okay <laughs> i'll be the entertainment yeah it's fine yeah yeah okay what else i think some nice takeaways for me first the breaking it down any incident will come down to material flesh time yeah right prioritize things correctly yeah at that moment things may seem more pressing on one front but it's there's only the one sequence that you can follow yeah until yeah. the human beings involved have been ironed out as problems yeah they're in trouble or they're causing trouble whatever the situation is as soon as you eliminate them then you can be at peace because the rest of it doesn't matter as much and uh, and sorry which human being in trouble is not important though could be you could be somebody you don't know could be the other side could be something that happened and you have to intervene in all cases if you can help please do yeah and the other one was and i i didn't think about it before but having the right environment at home right we spoke about this even when we talk we spoke about the first bike and you said that you know earn it earn it right create that environment at home so that you know they got your back yeah right and i'm telling you even if you think that your parents can't handle the truth trust me they can hmm. no matter how badly you've screwed it up the one set of people that you don't want to be lying to is your parents that's like to me it only breaks things as you go along as you get older as you get more set in the ways and as your parents get more set in your ways if you're willing to lie to them and they're willing to lie to you you cannot have a great relationship it will look like a great relationship outwardly inward you also know and they also know that it's not working just tell the truth no matter how much friction it causes tell the truth <laughs> when does lying work man never <laughs> no it never works <laughs> it, it never works yeah i know i i have i have this funda like for me uh lying and doing anything wrong any time i've tried it it's like immediate karma it just comes like top back yeah. right back at me yeah. and i have tried it of course yeah. but each time i have tried it it's been like instant instant response from the world saying beta ye mat kar yeah, right? so I, I, i just after one more i just forget it man you <laughs> think about more drink no forget the lying and the uh, wrong thing try the easy thing versus the hard thing oh. how many times have we solved a problem in saying there is an easy way to do it and then it has just not worked and then we had to go back to the hardest freaking way to do it yeah from the beginning we've done this <laughs> today also we are in the, still in the same boat we'll say hey here is a cool idea i'll tell you how this happens okay we shoot something that we internally call informal reels where kartik and i sit down and we say something a thought that's occurred to me the they said we'll shoot it on a phone camera <laughs> and they put the phone camera and say this needs more light so <laughs> then we added more lights then they said no it needs still more lights then there is still more lights then they said you know this audio on the phone is not working we need our normal audio kit so they brought the normal audio kit stuff like this right and they brought that in and they said you know we are so far into this we might as well get the dslrs out <laughs> at the end of this is it's like there's nothing informal left in this apart from the fact that i haven't prepped for it and i'm just like speaking my mind right but that is the best looking format of the whole thing uh. what can you do with a shortcut i don't think it ever works yeah. Correct. This work smart thing is stupid. You be smart, and you work as hard as you can. The combination can produce outrageous results. I was actually having this chat with Bernita and about Siran because you know he's at that age now. You yeah. know, we need to have some talks with him. I was just saying that anything easy, you might think that you know you just want to coast along in life. Hmm. But trust me, that's you're only inviting other troubles along yeah. the way for that. Yeah, other work. hardships which are uninvited. Yeah. When you choose the tougher path, hmm. right? When you choose the harder path. you're going to choose what difficulties you want to face yeah. right it will be at least you'll put put you in control of that right at you'll least. have the drive to take that on 
Yeah. Otherwise, when you're just looking to coast, everything else will feel like a challenge. Yeah. Everything else will feel like a hardship, and you're trying your best to dodge it, and you're not mentally ready for it. Not just that, you may not have a choice about dodging anything because remember, you're just coasting along out of control. Yeah, you have no. Yeah, yeah. You have absolutely. no. Absolutely. Uh, That's what I mean. You don't what know happens. what's going to come your way. Yeah. Then, you right? don't know. So yeah, okay. Hard you're way. hoping <laughs> that you're going down the rapids and you don't crash into a rock, but you have no control over this. So the hard way is the way to go about. Hard any way, of this. tell the truth, and in an emergency, especially to go back to where we were. I know a lot of people avoid passing on information to their families, thinking they'll get worried, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think if they realize that you're not telling them the whole picture, they will worry a heck of a lot more. Always. It will break the trust. Once the trust is broken, what they will be willing to let you do and what they will want you to stop doing will change dramatically. They will become a lot more conservative about what you should be doing. and then fighting that battle is just unnecessary and see it's not a one time thing right you can't suddenly get up one day and say that main aaj se jhoot bolna band karunga to ab se log manenge mujhe Nain. right yeah Nain it will take 10 years to establish that and that has happened so many times you know like people uh, some difficult situation and you call back home what are they thinking pura bataya ki nahi correct <laughs> they they are sitting and worry you may have told yeah, them the truth yeah, yeah, yeah. that it's this much is the yeah. problem but the person on the other end is just sitting and thinking no he's probably not told me yeah. everything all right what else i think the final thing we've said this about motorcycles before except that there will be things that look like emergencies not all of them are life threatening many of them will feel very very challenging in hindsight they will not be so challenging and that's okay i think what makes it really easy or at least easier is if you just accept that there will be issues Correct. that life isn't fair things are going to happen not everything is going to go your way a lot of stuff that is not very serious will look very serious on the face of it then you'll have to process it and learn from it and deal with it etc etc that's how things are right we are all afraid of having a police case against us or having to end up in a court trying to defend something that we did or didn't do but remember what i said right at the beginning Imagine the worst case scenario. Are you the first person that this has happened to? Aren't there other human beings navigating the same minefield? And if they can do it, then at least I think I can also manage. Mm. That thought process helps a lot. Is it really an accurate thought process? Maybe may not be. Is it really founded in truth? There is one truth to it. किसी और के साथ ये तो हुआ है. Beyond that, it is in much as much in your control as it is, and it's not in your control as much as it is not. And what's not in your control? Honestly, it's not in your control. You worry about it, get angry about it, get upset about it, cry about it, rage about it. It's still not in your control. I think the one thing uh, that I feel now for cars, and this is we were talking about this earlier as well, in terms of forget about what happened, the how it is perceived, what the outcome is at that moment is how you'll be judged. Yeah. And as is normal, the bigger vehicle is at fault. and for cars that is a genuine issue yeah it, it may not always be your fault but how do you handle it up till now actually we didn't have much of a solution yeah. and which is where this now with dash cams that's changing things a lot and yeah. i think it's i would have never thought that we'd be at this stage but looking more and more at things now yeah, I, i think, think until that, that is becoming a as a great way of uh i mean like a kind of like an insurance for yourself on the road you know yeah but i think until we are socially a more equal country where access to resources for everybody is similar we are dealing with a stratified situation and therefore you will get deal dealt with as a stratified thing too yeah right if i were to have the same crash on the river indi versus the ktm 390 duke versus my ducati versus something even more exotic i will get treated four different ways depending on what i was riding no the hierarchy is the same the bigger vehicle irrespective of cycle to scooter scooter to motorcycle yeah. motorcycle to superbike it will continue that way yeah There's and, no and your, your best plan if you don't have a dash cam might be to run straight to the police and tell them that this is what has happened and you're here because you're fearing retribution mm. although technically it's not your fault if you have a dash cam you can prove it if you don't have a dash cam it's your word against theirs because i think for cars and it's shocking how many such incidents are coming up now but uh, being able to just provide your side of the story mm. right can be a big big differentiator and changing the situation yeah and making an emergency a non emergency because there have been so many of these almost uh, scams or whatever you want to call them you know yeah. highway robbery effectively those kind of situations can also become <laughs> unnecessarily yeah. challenges so that was the only one that i had left in my head thinking about 
the kind of things that you end up having to deal with and this one is an unnecessary one which you can can take care of yeah and i would say situations like this they begin at some point mm. if you have a sense of something is off about it don't stop mm. oh man i have to tell you the other day when i was driving down so at lonavla now they've got this work going on right on the mm. expressway so there was this car really slow in the fast lane where there was a diversion so it's absolutely slow and everybody was overtaking him from the left and um i also passed and went in and as soon as i was getting into the lane that guy started flashing honking and wanted to basically prevent me from coming but i was always on half way through so i just went through then that guy was just on the horn right and uh i didn't understand it mm. and i think it's because it was a tn number plate car mm. right and i've i've heard of this before this is one of the few times i remember when vivek and i have also been uh, driving couple of times this has happened and he pointed it out to me that this is not a mh registered plate right correct and the aggression that that person showed was incredible mm. because he was on the horn consistently and i was also uh, impressed with my own maturity if i may say so but when i realized that this guy is going to be an ass and i'm not going to take a name of which brand it was that car also i just thought that yeah this is going to be oh, a the crater there actually i'm not going to give you any more okay so i just said that this is going to this might be interesting old xuv 500 <laughs> okay so all i did was as soon as i passed the vehicle that i wanted to pass i went back to the middle lane and i drove calmly and this car comes next to me and drives next to me and starts inching closer right as though it's going to ram into my my car all i did was i turned and i smiled at that guy mm. okay i just i was looking straight at him and smiling at him <laughs> like he, i don't know what you're doing bro i mm. mean if this is what you're going to do please by all means go ahead i'm in my lane <laughs> mm. i'm not moving from here i did not come to block you there is that correct I just stood there. He was next to me for some two, three minutes, and then the I think we had one highway police car come along, and then that car left. Mm. I was like, "This is so bizarre." So emergencies mm. again. This <laughs> I'm. Uh, this could have very easily been a weird kind of emergency. Yeah. Right. It could have been uh, manufactured for your satisfaction. Yeah, for his satisfaction, for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> the ego angle. Right. the same thing what we said stay calm keep your emotions out yeah we'll keep you out of emergencies as well yeah and and if your gut says something is wrong don't park in the middle of nowhere hmm. just keep going. oh just keep going oh yeah just keep going 100%. it doesn't matter if your vehicle really has that kind of a poor issue the vehicle will tell you first you don't need another human being and honestly if you're driving a car and you can't tell that you have one of your wheels running with no air in it you're not doing a very good job of driving are you oh. right that common sense all angle is a yeah. killer one yeah yeah i'm out on a motorcycle a lot and it's not like people haven't tried to flag me down and slow me down and stop i have no interest in stopping until i feel safe and if i am stopping it will be at the busiest place i can if i'm feeling threatened the less i have a threat perception the more i'm willing to stop in the middle of nowhere right and honestly i'm telling you it's been 25 years of riding out of which maybe the last 18 years i have been alone outside a lot mm. just don't do stupid things and i'm i'm very clear about this your intuition is a very powerful tool mm. listen to it and do not ignore it i'm telling you there are days when i have a feeling when i wake up in the morning and i'm picking up my helmet and there's a feeling saying not today mm. i don't care what the reasons are and how desperate i am for a motorcycle if my gut has said not today mm. i am not riding a bike good enough It's a good enough reason. I ride enough, and if I miss one day because my gut said no, I am okay. So yeah. So, in sum, don't worry too much about your machinery; can be fixed. Worry about the people, yours or otherwise. People are very hard to fix, and a lot of the laws are designed to protect the people. So if you fall foul of that by mistake, by accident, or with intent, you are in a lot of trouble. A lot more trouble than a broken bike. And think of time as a or car. or a car sorry <laughs> and think of time as a more flexible thing that you are used to it is the most important resource you'll ever have but there are situations where you can use time to your advantage and just not rush through the process 
make better decisions in the process of not rushing through it and get better results out of it and if i have to give you one take away from it please don't lie to people especially to your to the people who you think are important to you aur kuch nahi ekdam sahi ko what should we do the next time i want to talk about um premium products and aspiration yeah what would you like to talk about how we approach them uh from the driver's door side <laughs> or from the side <laughs> and side on a bike side from side the side stand side, side. <laughs> 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 now how we think about it right which is by the aspiration angle to it yeah, i sure. think there's a great um i mean we're lucky to have had lived with a lot of them yeah and see both sides of it yeah. but most of the people who are going to be dreaming of these are only dreaming of them or have seen them in glimpses yeah. right let's talk I about think it better prepared for that and happier lives with whatever they have now until they get to there and aspire it is important for you to aspire mm. so that way yeah what i want to talk about in the future at one point is how to decide what is a annoyance and what is a deal breaker mm. okay i'm hearing a lot of these comments that say uh for example the himalayan side stand is so badly designed that i can't buy the bike hmm really hmm that sounds stupid to me hmm. not that the side stand isn't a problem and not that royal enfield didn't screw them up screw themselves royally with that side stand and i know why they did it also i'll explain that also but that's not a reason not to buy that bike right right no, i 100% that's I, a good one yeah i hear things like this bike is fast but it makes so much heat it's not for me when somebody makes a cool running fast bike then i'll buy one hmm. no you don't even understand the physics of the heat and you're taking a niggle and turning it into a deal breaker and you can i mean you're free to do it but i think you'll miss out on some very very cool machinery because you're looking at the flaws and turning and making them into much bigger things than they are one episode will do that we'll figure out which one yeah yeah Done. have some doozy examples nice of things that are actually stupid No, there's great stuff in cars. I can think of stuff that people. Yeah. Sh- I mean, there are straight up reasons to not buy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Which people will not think about, but I think they should. Any car that has a hundred and four variants, you shouldn't buy. <laughs> Or more. <laughs> Or more, more is even worse. <laughs> yeah. Both those should not even be in the consideration set. How many variants does your vehicle have? Three. Awesome. This is probably <laughs> worth buying. Four. We're okay. Six. Oh my God, they're really pushing it. Seven. <laughs> cool premium Done. and aspiration i think is a good one done yeah and remember the last episode we will deal with the best comments through the entire season just like we did in season 1 so we are at episode 11 now so hmm chat okay that's it 3 2 1 disconnect disconnect hey 3 2 1 disconnect, disconnect.